Hello, my name is Robin Sutter. I'm from the University of Wuppertal and today I'm going to be talking about the CMOS camera type Terats compact antenna test range for far field radiation pattern analysis. This is the outline of our work. So first I will provide a motivation, then I will talk about conventional ketters. After that I will talk about the CMOS camera type Terats ketter, which is the main subject of this work. After that I will show you the measured results. And in the end, I will summarize and conclude my talk. Okay, let's start right off with the motivation of our work. So I think it is clear to everyone that it is important to determine far field characteristics of transmitters, also in the turrets range, which include radiation pattern, directivity, half power beam width, and the radiated power. This is important for all kinds of applications. Suppose you want to design a proper turrets active imaging system and you need to design some front optics of course you need to know the directivity or for receiver characterization you need to know directivity and radiated power to determine the sensitivity of your receiver so the radiation pattern is normally determined at a far field range tx and rx are placed um, at a distance of 2d squared divided by lambda according to the Fraunhofer distance and with this you can measure the far field radiation pattern. Directivity and half power beamwidth can simply be extracted from this. So you need a single measurement to get the first three metrics. But for the fourth, the radiated power, you normally need a second measurement setup. So you need an absolute power meter which is placed close by the TX and with this you can get the absolute power or the radiated power of your transmitter. So summarized you need two measurements. Especially at the terahertz range there are some limitations related to the SNR. So first transmitters suffer from a low radiated power and second you have a high path loss due to large far field distances and also some atmospheric absorption. And this limited SNR makes it really hard to determine far field radiation patterns measured at a far field range. So to overcome and to bypass these issues, we present a novel measurement concept to measure far field characteristics of transmitters, such as the radiation pattern, directivity, half power beam width, and the radiated power all at once. Here, I want to give a brief introduction to conventional ketters. So, conventional ketters employ a feed antenna coupled to a range collimating optic, which then provides plane waves. And in these plane waves, the RX is placed and rotated. You can see sketches on the right for reflector type and dielectric lens type ketters. And this is basically the whole principle. I think it is well understandable and there are some limitations of course. The size of the collimating optic, then the surface accuracy of the collimating optic. It is quite hard to fabricate um, for instance a, a reflector or a lens with sufficient surface accuracy because if the surface is too rough then the rays are distorted and your amplitude profile is also distorted. You know, and then there's also limitation of interaction between collimating optic and receiver antenna, which are about the standing waves. And you, of course, need to make sure that the impact of standing waves is reduced. Okay, let's come to the most important question of today. How is the CMOS camera type turret scatter actually working? Okay. The TX is placed in the focal point of the camera lens and it provides a diverging wavefront with an angle dependent amplitude. Then what the camera lens actually does is it collimates the radiation. And then finally the FPA sensor is illuminated by this collimated radiation whereas each camera pixel receives radiation from a different angle. And with this you can simply measure the far field radiation pattern of a transmitter 
measured at a compact range and it is really compact so the diameter of the lens is 15 millimeter the focal length is 3.1 millimeter so you have a very compact system which you can simply plug into the usb connect it back to back and you get the farfield radiation pattern it's quite convenient so the radiation pattern you also can extract from the same measurement since each camera pixel is performing absolute power measurements since it is a direct terahertz power detector and when integrating across all these pixels you get the radiated power when calibrated with the camera responsivity so there are some camera related problem areas i can just um, point them so um, the limited SNR, of course, pixel to pixel variation of access aberrations, limited field of view of the camera of 46 degrees, and the limited angular resolution of 1.66 degrees. But I will talk about this um, in a more detailed way later on. On the left, you see the TX characterized, and on the right, the CMOS turrets camera used as Ketter. And the source radiates 1 to 8.8 .8 microwatt from 0.6 to 1.1 terahertz and the antenna provides in this frequency range a directivity between 23.7 and 28.3 dBi. So we characterized the source in the entire band with 33.33 gigahertz depth size using the CMOS terahertz camera. And the camera has an NEP of 70 nanowatt at 0.85 terahertz in video mode of course frame averaging can improve the sensitivity performance of the camera even further so here you see the measured far field radiation patterns we measured four times four low resolution images acquired at angular offset since the camera was mounted onto a robot arm as shown in the previous slide so a single frame corresponds to a single frame low resolution far field radiation pattern with 1000 pixels measured in 30 seconds the super resolution far field radiation pattern contains information of all four times four low resolution images and this was done for 15 frequencies so we measured 15 times four times four images so on the Upper left, you see an example low resolution far field radiation pattern measured at 0.852 terahertz, and the corresponding super resolution far field radiation pattern you see on the lower left. And you can see the resolution increased besides an increased pixel count. And we also extracted cross section cuts along theta and phi for all super resolution far field radiation patterns as shown on the right side and you can see the frequency dependent behavior regarding the half power beam width as indicated with the dashed lines so on the left you see the directivity extracted from low resolution and super resolution far field radiation patterns measured using the turret scatter as compared to the ideal values in the center you see the peak SNR and SNR achieved across the frequency and the directivity determination accuracy, which is the difference between ideal and measured values you see on the left. On the right you see the half power beamuth extracted along both theta and phi from the super resolution far field radiation patterns compared to the ideal values and an average one across theta and phi. And in summary, um, using super resolution imaging, directivity and half power beam width were determined within an RMS accuracy of 0.8 dB and 0.49 degrees respectively within the 6 dB operating bandwidth of the camera from 0.7 to 5 to 0.99 terahertz. And in this range, we achieved a peak SNR larger than 30 dB. We also extracted the radiated power from the measurements and therefore we used low resolution images. On the upper left you can see the formula which we used to determine it. Um, this is simply done 
via the responsivity of the camera. And you can see it in the graph, we used a PM4 power meter and we used the Terrat scatter. So we just extracted from all low resolution images and what you see are the mean and sigma values for each frequency. And we calculated a, an RMS accuracy of 0.7 microwatt in the entire operating bandwidth of the source from 0.6 to 1.1 terahertz using the mean values as compared to the values measured with the PM4 power meter. And this proves that the entire radiation falls within the camera field of view and also the impact of standing waves is quite small since the sigma values per frequency divided by the mean values is relatively small number. Okay, let me finally summarize and conclude my talk. So we have presented the concept of CMOS camera type terahertz scatter for the complete far field characterization of terahertz transceivers. We performed a broadband analysis from 0.6 to 1.1 terahertz and the key performance summary is listed below. So the RMS directivity determination accuracy is 0.8 dB. The half power beam width was determined within an accuracy of 0.49 degrees and the radiated power within an RMS accuracy of 0.7 microwatt. So more you can see at tomorrow's poster session where my dear colleague Vishal Yakta presents the broadband spectrospatial characterization of a CW terahertz photometer using the CMOS camera and one example radiation pattern you can see here on the right. Thanks to our sponsors and thanks for your attention.